Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm going to be taking a look at another one of these figurized standard amplified Digimon kits. This right here is the best Digimon of them all, Metal Greymon. Anyway, I got this through Hobby Link Japan, link in the description if you want one of your own. Anyway, let's get this out of the box. So jumping on into the aesthetics, now I've built a few of these Digimon kits, quite a few so far. Not all of a couple I still need to get around to, but I have to say this right here might just be the nicest one that I have ever seen. This looks incredible. Now you don't even have to take my word for it, you can just take a look at it yourself right now. Bandai has pulled out all the stops for Metal Greymon here and everything looks perfect. There's so many things going on, I'll get into them a little bit closer later on so you can know a little bit more about them, but this has got three dimensional stickers, reflective stickers, some of the coolest effect parts around back, the way the teeth and the mouth have been molded, the eyes, everything is fantastic. If there's anything I'd mildly complain about is the fact that you have to use stickers on those eyes, but besides that everything in here is absolute perfection. Now winding back a little bit, when it comes to the way that this builds up, this is quite impressive. It's just like what we've seen so far with these figurized standard amplified Digimon kits, but Bandai's getting better and better each time it does it. It doesn't feel as hollow or as incomplete as some of the other kits we would have seen before, like the standard version of Greymon. And the layering of parts is incredible. You've got the orange parts with the skin that actually, when you do zoom on in, have some really nice texturing, scale-like texturing on some parts. Adding a little bit of low light to that will really make it stand out, but I just have it built as standard today. Then you actually insert the blue stripes into the orange parts and it works perfect. Any other detail in here like the metallic parts embedded in Metal Greymon's flesh, they just attach in simply. They just sandwich between two skin parts and that is it. It's all done quite simply, but what you get in the end is incredible. The arms have a lot to them, especially the metal aspects. All the metal parts that make Metal Greymon, well, Metal Greymon, they have a lot going on in it. The claw is a leftover pretty much from the standard version of Greymon, so we do have some leftover parts too. And the build of the wings is really unique. These wings have these cool holographic pieces that come on a sheet, you pop them out. It is a little bit tedious to actually pop out all the little pieces of these, but what you get in the end is great. These are both kind of prismatic as well as being very highly detailed. Again, Bandai has worked wonders with this. When you get to the head, which is, I guess, one of the most important parts, if not the most important part of a model kit, because you'd be staring at it the most, what they've done here is incredible, especially with the mouth. You have the skin parts, then you have the teeth as a different layer, and then you have the gum mouth sections in a clear red. Now, I didn't know how a clear red would really work out. I thought it might look a little on the cheap side, but this works so, so well. But the funny thing is, the mouth actually reminds me a little bit of one of these. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I feel it's a good thing. Otherwise, this builds up and attaches together so perfectly. It feels very, very good. I almost skipped over one interesting aspect, that is the tail. This does have some wires in it just like we would have seen with some of these kits before. The wire is already cut to size, you just slot it in through and it all builds up and closes up perfectly where you actually tie the knot to hold it. We have another bit of thicker red wire in here as well and this goes into some of the weapon arms, specifically something we're going to be taking a little look at later on. But anyway, let's jump on a little bit closer into Metal Greymon and see what we can see. So grabbing onto Metal Greymon back here and bring them in a little bit closer. So like I mentioned, the mouth on this is very, very nice the way everything has been done. The eye, even though it's a sticker, kind of doesn't really look that bad because it just gels together quite well. The purple is sticker, the blue is sticker. This is the sticker sheet, by the way. There is quite a lot in here. And we do have a lot of these little green ones like here and here. These aren't really the worst. And there was some color correcting ones for up on the horns, but I didn't really like the way those looked. They didn't look like they're gonna sit too well. So I did not use those ones. These wings back here, these are incredible to catch the light in such a cool kind of way. We've got all that Digimon digital, well, nonsense going on in there and I love it. The hair segment here is done in three layers so, so perfectly. You wouldn't even tell the, well, these were all different parts. This right here in the cheek, that is one of those three dimensional stickers Bandai is using a lot lately. This is the sheet of those. These are actually kind of like hard. So they're not just a sticker, so there is a little bit of clear plastic over the, well, foily aspect of these, which does mean they do look like an actual plastic piece, and they do look a lot more impressive when attached. There's some more there. They've got an almost mirrored kind of feel to it. Those are ridiculously cool. The way the skin works is great. The box says they've made a kind of new way that avoids seam lines for... A the box does say 
Bandai are now kind of doing this new way of molding things that you can't really see the seam lines. And you really can't. There's a seam line right down the middle of the leg there. And it pushes together so perfectly, the stripes don't actually have a seam, so that breaks it. So it really ends up with them being not too obvious. In this arm right here, we do have some stickers behind the actual clear parts for that mirrored effect. Bandai has gone all out, so we do even have detail in the bottoms of the feet. The end of the tail there is incredibly incredibly detailed looking great and like I mentioned I don't know how hard this will be to see in some parts of the kind of fleshy areas we do have some scaly aspects molded into it so if you hit that with some kind of pen liner or a Gundam marker or some kind of ink of your choice that's kind of in a brown or something similar you will definitely bring that out and there's some nice texturing to behold there. There's that full 360 degree spin, so you can see absolutely every aspect of this for yourself. I have to say, I am so impressed by what Bandai has done here. Each of these Digimon kits are just getting better and better. Thinking back to the original couple, they kind of seem like hollow, featureless kits compared to what we're seeing here. This is nice, it's fairly sizable too, and the detailing just looks so, so good. You almost wouldn't even notice that this is a model kit. It almost has a figure kind of look to it, but without, you know, the associated cost of being a figure. And if you wanted it to look even better, of course, you can always paint it and paint it whatever color that you want. Moving now to the size comparison, and there it is side by side with the high grade Gundam. And as you can see, it's a pretty sizable model kit. And there it is side by side with a master grade, so it is pretty large. Finally, there it is next to an action figure, and that is the SH Figuarts Guts. So next up into the accessories, and this is kind of funny because usually there isn't an accessories part in a Digimon kit review. This does come with quite a few bits, which is pretty cool. We've got the big old chest missiles with flame effect round back. We've got this giant arm cannon, which has a whole actual arm attachment part. We've got this, which apparently is brand new for this kit. A kit exclusive, if you will. And finally, we do have this, which I believe is a base adapter, but we're about to find out. So the first of the accessories in here are the missiles of the Giga Destroyer. These have a little flame effect round back, which looks pretty cool. Actually, if you sprayed a little bit of white around the bottom, they would look even better, but that's still awesome. The teeth on these are meant to be in white. There is no stickers included, so you're going to have to paint those yourself. However, the full stand that you're seeing right here is included, as well as the rest of the rack for this stand, or should I say the rest of the runner, that all of the parts are on. So that would be this right here. So there are shorter and longer little sticky bits for using with this if you do want it to be a little bit different. And we do have this little section here which can attach this onto an Action Base 4. So if you do pop the metal grame on onto an Action Base 5 maybe not 4 I'm not sure maybe 4 and 5 are kind of the same and uh, this can link onto that so you can have those attached while it's displayed on that we do have two of these which is pretty cool and metal gray on here does have the opening chest segment with the two launcher segments in there but I am no rocket scientist but those rockets would not fit in those holes I guess it's just some digital magic so the next option we do have in here is this absolutely giant arm back here. But before we take a look at that, we might as well take a look at the flesh arm that we have already. The articulation on this is quite nice. Compared to what we would have been seeing with previous Digimon kits, this can move a lot. I'll also mention there is meant to be stickers included for these little screw segments right here. But I don't think those stickers would work out too well. They just end up peeling off, so I didn't bother using them. The hands, they can open up just like so. So that, actually, I'm going to pop this off so you can actually see what it's like so there is the hand all the way open and there it is all the way closed now these are c-clips so they can pop a little bit and we do have a little bit of a wrist here too for that good old bicep flex also i do have the arm off i will mention these are great shoulder joints they can move forward and back like so and inside of there they can rotate like that so you can change the direction these go completely these are very nice but now it's time for an arm transplant so next up in here, we've got the Alturus Energy Cannon, which is a pretty ridiculous weapon. So the upper arm is pretty much the same as what we would have seen before. So this does have some nice articulation. Can rotate at this point here. Both sides are pretty much identical to each other. We've got some of that red wire inside of it looking particularly cool. And this is in silver and gold injection plastic, which honestly in this kit doesn't look too bad. There is two forms of this. This is the first one, so we might as well get this one attached. So attaching this on is super simple. It just pops on like that, and that is really it. 
So that is what the cannon looks like attached. And this thing is absolutely huge. Balancing this at times definitely can be a little bit difficult and that's why Bandai did include this right here, which is an attachment point for attaching onto an action base. So in order to get this onto an action base, just take off the tail just like so. We just attach this on in like that and that is the adapter segment. So simple enough. Then you just grab yourself an action base four, attach on this little segment like so. This doesn't come include, this comes with an action base four. Uh, it should be black. I just took it off one that's clear. This one just blends into the background a little bit better. That then just attaches on just like so. And that is what it's like up on a stand. So maybe we get that into some kind of like almost flight like pose. There isn't a ridiculous amount of articulation on this. You've kind of only got the one pose mainly most of the time, but we'll see what we can get. Make him look like he's about to fire off some kind of shot. And there we go. So that is what he will look like up on a stand. Even though there is a little bit of wiggle on this, it has no chance of falling over or falling out of its pose. It does hold that absolutely perfectly. This arm back here is exactly the same as what we would have seen on the standard Greymon. You got the moving independent fingers like so, and you can actually rotate this part right here if you want to make that look a little bit more dynamic or something like that. So apparently there is a form which is unique to this kit right here that we can do with the Alteris Cannon right here. So what you do is you pop it off at the... Well, you take the whole arm off. We're going to be taking this off at the bicep, replacing back on the flesh arm, taking this arm off at the bicep, removing the cannon from that arm entirely from here, and then attaching on this brand new piece which has a three-point claw that opens up just like so. The side ones are on a regular kind of hinges. This one is on a C-clip. These just attach in like so. So you'll be popping the wires into those holes and then just attaches on like so, which looks really nice. I love the wires. Definitely awesome. We then have this little bit of an elbow joint part. We need to remove one of these segments by popping it out like so. So that kind of does mean it can go on either or arm, it seems. That then just attaches in like so and then connects into the bicep up like this with this kind of, whoa, very heavy arm compared to the other one. So we may have to readjust ever so slightly. That is a big hefty arm and that looks badass right there. So yeah, compared to that other arm that we just saw, this one <laughs> fell off. So yeah, compared to that other arm we just saw, this one is definitely big and heavy. The motion of the upper arm is pretty much the same. We can bring this one forward like so for those shooting attacks, but it also seems like it can actually just windmill around like so to have an actual physical attacking end like that. So that is a pretty cool option and apparently 100% unique to this version of Metal Greymon. So finally now onto the articulation. I have to say Bandai is definitely evolving these kit or should I say digivolving these kits. They are, well, you know, if you hold it by the legs, the weight can be a little bit much for it, but it's still a rock solid kit all around. It's so nicely designed. Like, I mean, there's some joints in here that are just so cool. Like there's one right here in the chest like that. You'd think it would have no articulation, but it brings it up and out so it can lean back, can lean forward, and it's very simply and nicely designed inside of it, making it pretty strong. Now, usually I wouldn't try to make this pull off the usual pose, but I'm gonna give it a go. And there we go, it actually pulls it off nice enough, like surprisingly, for a kit like this, and a Digimon kit at that, this can actually do the little bit of a pose quite well. And it's not even tooled for that sort of thing. The only thing this is missing out of really any kind of articulation based anything, is the fact that it does not have a swivel at the waist right here. So it can't rotate around. This is only forward and back only. The only turn you get is at the head, which is still quite good. Like, I mean, let's break this apart and go through the articulation on everything. It's that good. So first up at the head, we've got the jaw that comes down like that. And the whole back of the head can actually open up to give you even more for that cannon inside. So one more time, that just slides down like so. Very, very nicely designed. At the neck, there's the head all the way up. Again, fantastic. There, ooh, there it is all the way down. So be careful with that joint. So it's mainly up to the top. There is the side to side. Be careful not to pop that joint. And we do have a little bit of side to side pivot, but not a lot. Like I mentioned before, the shoulders are nicely designed. They're aligned to go forward and back, or you can actually rotate them 
Well, you'd have to remove them to actually rotate them to get them to go up and down, whichever you want. But there's already a little bit of up and down in here. We've got the full rotation too, a bit blocked, of course, by all that stuff, but it can go the whole way around. We've got full bicep rotation right here. There is the bend at the elbow, and there is the fingers. This arm right here, there it is all the way up, down, all the way around. It can go around the whole way. There is the bend at the elbow. We've got some wrist movement as well. You can rotate that inside of that, and those fingers can open up like so. Like I mentioned, the biggest disappointment is the lack of a rotation in the actual torso at all, but we can extend that, get back and forward like so. Like this can really get down like that, which is pretty cool. Just, yeah. Head pops off easy enough if you keep moving around a lot. Like it is a strong joint. It's just all the constant motion can kind of eke it off. Next up when it comes to the kicks, the legs can pretty much spin the whole way around inside of right there. We've got some rotation up here as well. Pop the leg off just to get a bit of clarity for this. There is the leg as straight as it can get. There is the bend. We do have a nice joint here at the ankle, which allows for quite a bit. Toe bend right there and rotation at the ankle. The tail right here is that wire assembly, so it kind of is movable like so. So moving on the wire. The last little segment right here, that's where there's actual joints, so it can move up and down like so. And each of these wings has a ball joint connecting them into the body, so you can move them out and in, up and down. And we do have a hinge here as well, and they can rotate inside the ball joint. So those are incredibly, incredibly expressive. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And when it comes to these Digimon kits, these Bandai Digimon kits, this one has to be, without a single doubt, the best one I have ever laid my hands on. Now, I haven't looked at them all, but I've looked at the vast majority of them, and this one has impressed me the most. Going through the list aesthetically, it looks absolutely fantastic. There's very little model kit looking aspects to it, and they have captured Metal Greymon perfectly, and also added that cool amplified stylisticness to it as well. When it comes to the accessories, usually these kits don't have accessories. This has those great little chest missiles and a whole bunch of options for moving around and changing the arms, as well as a cannon that is, or should I say, a cannon arrangement, which is unique to this kit. Finally, then when it comes to the articulation, the only negative thing I can say is there's no rotation in the actual main body. But besides that, this thing can pose really well. I did not expect that because most of these kits don't really have much in the lines of articulation either. Also, it's a lot more solid than some of the kits I've looked at before. So this to me is the perfect Digimon kit. So if you're ever thinking of getting one, get one. If you are collecting them so far and want to grab another one, I highly recommend this. And if you've never tried one and never thought to, and you're a little bit curious, I say go for it. This is a perfect model kit. Anyway, as always, I got mine through Hobby Link Japan. Link in the description. Thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more model kit reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos and all of these awesome people right here who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Ten Soldier YT, Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Dashiell Marmion, Golel Rockstar, Joe, Lauren Seahack, or G95061, Ten Soldier YT again, and Van Fawn.